Hello and welcome. In this math tutorial, our task is to find the values of x that satisfy this logarithmic equation. To solve this problem, we are going to start from the right hand side. Notice that this is the only log term that has a different base from these other two. Here we have base 2, base 2, but this is base root 2. So what we are going to do is that we will change the base of this logarithm from root 2 to 2 to match these other two terms. Now, when we apply the change of base formula for log readings, we have that log to base root two of x, that is this, is equal to log to base two. Remember two is the new base of x divided by log to base two of the old base, which is root two. But of course, you know that we can write root 2 as 2 to the power half. So this is equal to log to base 2 of x divided by log to base 2 of 2 to the power half. Now, remember that when we have log to base a of a to power b, that this is equal to b. So log to base 2 of 2 to the power half is equal to half. So this becomes equal to log to base 2 of x divided by half. Now, remember that when you divide by a fraction, it is exactly the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So this is the same as the reciprocal of 1 over 2 is 2 over 1. So here we have 2 times log to base 2 of x. So we have that log to base root 2 of x is the same as 2 times log to base 2 of x. Now let us rewrite the original equation. Here we have log to base 2 of x squared. Of course, you know that this is exactly equal to that plus the square root of log to base 2 of x is equal to 2 times log to base 2 of x. Now the next step to solving this equation is to do a substitution. Let d be equal to the square root of log to base 2 of x. That is this. Now you know that this comes with the condition that d must be positive because a square root must be positive. So we have that d must be greater than or equal to 0. And of course, when we square both sides of this equation, we have that d squared is equal to log to base 2 of x. Now, the next thing we are going to do is that we will rewrite this equation in terms of d and d squared. So here we have log to base 2 of x, which is equal to d squared. And this is squared plus this, which is equal to d. And this is equal to 2 times log to base 2 of x, which is equal to d squared. Now, rearranging this equation, here we have d to the power 4. Of course, you know that when we have a situation like this, to get rid of the bracket, we simply multiply these two powers. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Moving this term over to the left hand side we have minus 2d squared and then we have plus d and then this is equal to 0. Now notice that these three terms have a common factor which is d so we can factorize. When we do that we have d into d to power 4 divided by d is d cubed. So this is d cubed. Minus 2d squared divided by d is minus 2d. And d divided by d is 1. And of course, this is equal to 0. Now, this means that the product of d and d cubed minus 2d plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means that either d is equal to 0 or d cubed minus 2d plus 1 is equal to 0. Because when you have the product of two items being equal to 0, it means that either one of them is equal to 0 or both of them are equal to 0. 
So already from here, we have one value of D. We have D equal to zero. Now to solve this cubic equation, let us use the trial and error method. Let us see if D equal to one satisfies this cubic equation. What we are going to do is that we will substitute one for D into the left hand side and see if we get zero. When we do that, we have one cube minus two times one plus one. One cube is one. Two times one is two plus one. One plus one is two. Two minus two is zero. So that means that D equal to one satisfies this cubic equation. And hence, D minus one is a factor of this cubic expression. That simply means that if we divide d cubed minus 2d plus 1 by d minus 1, we are going to get the other quadratic factor, which we can now solve for the other values of d. So here we have d minus 1. Now let us divide this expression by d minus 1 using the synthetic division method. The coefficient of d cubed is 1. You can see that there is no term in d squared. So the coefficient of d squared is zero. The coefficient of d is minus two and the constant term is one. We are dividing by one. We bring down this one. One times one is one. Zero plus one is one. One times one is one. Minus two plus one is minus one. One times minus one is minus one. One minus one is zero. Now, this is the coefficient of d squared. This is the coefficient of d, and this is the constant term. So we have that this is going to be d squared plus d minus 1. And of course, this is going to be equal to 0. Now, you can see that we have factorized this cubic expression. And once more, when you look at this, you will see that either d minus 1 is equal to 0 or d squared plus d minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, when we add 1 to both sides of this equation, we have that d is equal to 1. So we found another value of d, d equal to 1. Now we cannot factorize this quadratic equation, so let us solve by completing the square method. Since the coefficient of d squared is already one, the next step is to move this constant term to the right hand side. When we do that, we have d squared plus d equal to one. Now the next thing we are going to do is that we will add the square of half the coefficient of d to both sides of the equation to complete the square. Now, what is the coefficient of d? It is one. Of course, half of it is half. We square half and add to both the left-hand side and the right-hand side to complete the square. So here we have d squared plus d plus half squared is equal to one plus half squared. Now, the left-hand side of this equation is a perfect square. So here we have d plus half squared. Notice that if you expand this, you're going to get exactly this. And of course, this is equal to one plus half squared is one over four. Four times one is four plus one, five. So this is five over four. And of course, the next step to solving this equation is to take square root of both sides of the equation. This square takes care of the square root, leaving us with d plus half is equal to plus or minus square root of 5 over 4. And this is equal to plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2, which is the square root of 4. Now, when we subtract half from both sides of this equation, we have that d is equal to minus half plus root 5 over 2 or minus half minus root 
5 over 2. We have two values of D. This value of D is positive. This value of D is negative. Now, remember our constraint. D must be greater than or equal to 0. That is, D must be positive. That means that this value of D is unacceptable. So the other value of D that satisfies this equation or that we can use to find the values of X that satisfies this equation is D equal to minus one plus root five over two. And finally, to calculate the values of X, let us remember that from our substitution, we have that log to base 2 of x is equal to d squared. Now, when d is equal to 0, this is going to be equal to 0 squared, which is 0. When d is equal to 1, log to base 2 of x is going to be equal to 1 squared, which is 1. And when d is equal to minus 1 plus root 5 over 2, we have that d squared, which is log to base 2 of x is going to be equal to minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 squared. Minus 1 squared is 1. 2 times minus 1 times root 5 is minus 2 root 5. And root 5 squared is plus 5 divided by 2 squared, which is 4. Now, 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. So this is 6 minus 2 root 5 over 4. Now we can factorize this numerator. We have 2 into 6 divided by 2 is 3. Minus 2 root 5 divided by 2 is minus root 5. And of course, we still have 4 in the denominator. 2 into itself is 1 and into 4 is 2. So we have that log to base 2 of x is going to be 3 minus root 5 divided by 2. And now we can calculate the values of x. From here, we have that either log to base 2 of x is equal to 0 or log to base 2 of x is equal to 1 or log to base 2 of x is equal to 3 minus root 5 over 2. And of course, you know that when we have a statement like this, it simply means that 2 to the power 0 is equal to x. So from here, we have that x is equal to 2 to the power 0, which is equal to 1. From here, we have that x is equal to 2 to the power 1, which is equal to 2. And from here, that is the last one. We have that x is equal to 2 to the power 3 minus root 5 over 2. That is 2 to the power 3 minus root 5 divided by 2. So these are the three values of x that satisfy this logarithmic equation. 1, 2, and 2 to the power 3 minus root 5 over 2. Now, to check our answer, let us start by rewriting this equation in the form log to base 2 of x squared plus root log to base 2 of x is equal to. Remember that this right hand side in base 2 is 2 times log to base 2 of x. Now, when we substitute 0 for log to base 2 of x into this equation, we have 0 squared plus root 0 is equal to 2 times 0. That is, 0 is equal to 0. So, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. When we substitute 1 for log to base 2 of x into this equation, we have 1 squared plus root 1 is equal to 2 times 1. 1 squared is 1, root 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Once more, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And in the final case, when we substitute 3 minus root 5 over 2 for log to base 2 of x, we have 3 minus 
root 5 over 2 squared plus the square root of 3 minus root 5 over 2 is minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. Now, is this equal to 2 times 3 minus root 5 over 2? Opening this bracket, we have 3 squared, that is 9. 2 times 3 times minus root 5, that is minus 6 root 5. Plus minus root 5 squared, that is 5. Divided by 2 squared is 4. Minus, we have 1 plus root 5 over 2. Is this equal to 2? will cancel to, to give us 3 minus root 5. 9 plus 5 is 14 minus 6 root 5 divided by 4 minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Is this equal to 3 minus root 5? Now we can factorize this. We have 2 into 14 divided by 2 is 7. Minus 6 root 5 divided by 2 is minus 3 root 5 divided by 4. Minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Is this equal to 3 minus root 5? 2 into itself is 1. Into 4 is 2. So from here we have 7 minus 3 root 5 minus 1 plus root 5 divided by since they both now have the same denominator we have 2 is this equal to 3 minus root 5 7 minus 1 is 6 minus 3 root 5 plus root 5 is minus 2 root 5 divided by 2 is this equal to 3 minus root 5 we can factorize this we have 2 into 6 divided by 2 is 3. Minus 2 root 5 divided by 2 is minus root 5 divided by 2. This will cancel that. Is this equal to 3 minus root 5? And of course, when you look at this, you will see 3 minus root 5, and this is equal to 3 minus root 5. So once more, in the case where log today's 2 of x is equal to 3 minus root 5 over 2. This logarithmic equation is satisfied because you can see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoy such content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.